What's the best way to bring this conversation up with young girls? Because it starts as early as five. It starts so young when five-year-olds are already talking about dieting before they even understand what it is. Make your household a place where you don't make catty comments about how other people look, where you're not talking about celebrities and whether they've gained or lost weight, where you just don't do that. I've talked to a lot of moms who've said, we made a body talk free zone in our house. We just don't do it. One of my favorite things my mom taught me is that lessons are caught, not taught. Moms talk yeah. about themselves and their daughters catch on. They do, and I, I know a lot of moms are really heartbroken broken to hear that because what they really wanted was to raise a daughter who felt good about herself. And instead, sometimes what you get is a daughter who learned from you. And if what you're saying all the time is, I need to lose weight, I'm getting wrinkles, I'm getting gray hairs, or if you're worried about that all the time, the lesson your daughter learns is that she's never going to be enough. Right? And that part of growing into a woman means never being satisfied with how you look. And I don't think that's a lesson we mean to teach our daughters, but we do sometimes. Say we have a body-free zone in our house mm -hmm. um, and a, a young girl still comes home and says, Sophie said I have big legs, or they just come home and say, I think you know, my butt is big or yeah. something in a negative way, then what do you do? And it's, it's going to happen, right? I, I hear from colleagues all the time who will say, my, my daughter came home and she said that she feels ugly or she feels fat. And so we can't ignore those moments, but I think we need to dig deeper. So our first instinct is just to patch up the wound and say, no, you're beautiful. Um, but I've had a lot of people tell me that's mom beautiful. You don't believe it when your mom tells you you're beautiful anyway. Right. right. So instead of that first instinct to just deny that pain and tell your daughter how beautiful she is, I think we need to dig a little deeper and say, wow, what a strange world we live in where people feel like they need to talk about the shape of other people's legs. Mm -hmm. That's a weird world, isn't it? Right? It depends on the age of your daughter. So realistically, yeah. because I came home and, and said that you to did. my mom where I was like, I feel so fat today. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that would make me feel better, you know? Yeah, I think it depends on the age. What I usually say is if you're working with teenagers or girls who are getting close to teenage years, how old yeah. were you when you did that? I was probably like eighth or ninth grade. Yeah, so here's what I say. Ask your, the young women in your lives, who benefits when you feel that way? Who is it that makes money off women hating their bodies and feeling like they're never okay? Who does that help? Does it help you? Does it help the people who love you? And let them get angry, right? Let them That's get angry at the culture that does this to them. So they feel empowered oh, yeah. by it. Yeah. Yeah. So That's to an interesting take some tactic. of that teenage rage and, and use it so that they want to change this culture, so that they want to build a kind of world where we don't make women feel that way all the time. I love that. Um, the impact of social media, it seems, especially Instagram, yeah. it just seems so great. It really is. I, I really do thank my lucky stars that I got to grow up free of social media. I, don't, yeah. I would be different today, I think, if I hadn't. Um, the, the difference is we know more about print media or seeing someone on television. We know that there's airbrushing and things are manipulated. But when we see things in our Instagram feeds, we often forget that. Um, we see pictures of our friends and they feel more real to us. And we forget that maybe our friend posed for 100 shots before she got that perfect one. And then she threw some filters on it and maybe even used an app to change her face a little bit. And so it puts you in this constant race with the other women in your lives. And it's not a healthy race to be in. I think we really need to do everything we can to opt out. Right, just Opt don't out. That's the key phrase here. Yeah. Um, I actually unfollowed every Instagram account that made me Excellent. think about my body. I love that. After it's, reading your yeah. book. Because it's like, if you are what you eat, you think what you consume. Mm -hmm. right? If you know that there are images hurting you, just stop, right? You don't need workout before and afters, mm -hmm. right? If you want to take care of your body, you know how to do that. You don't need shame to help get you there. And you don't want to feed the part of your brain that gets jealous and gets obsessed with these sorts of things. I don't think those are the people we want to be. And so if you know there are forces in your social media feeds that are pushing you that way, just get rid of them. You won't miss them. Opt out. I promise. Do you miss them? No. I feel way better. Yeah.